Thank you all for joining us. This is Society 2045. We're um, a group that's seeking to co-discover a vision for what 2045 will look like. As leaders in different communities, we are working towards a vision that we've defined loosely as helping to envision and co-create a future based on relationships, community, rather than institutions and procedures. And so our effort here today is to talk to folks on the weekly basis through the next three or four months that are involved in different communities in trying to see what their vision for 2045 is and how that vision either integrates with ours or, or complements ours and what that looks like so that we can grow our vision and understand that better. And so today we are interviewing one of our own, Kim Wright. And um, Kim is um, a co-founder of uh, Society 2045, as well as a co-founder of Conscious Contracts and a bunch of other things. So she'll tell us a little bit more about that. I won't go into that. Um, but I think the process that, or the, the structure that we would like to do is to limit the amount about ourselves and uh, the work we're doing and in order to spend a little bit more time and uh, being able to discover for uh, ourselves as we are talking about our vision and, um, and what that vision looks like from our community's perspective and our individual perspective. So that's really sort of the focus of, of how we're gonna communicate if we can. So uh, Kim, why don't you start with a little bit about yourself, the work you're doing, and then we'll spend most of the time on, on the rest of it. So I always have a hard time with that question because I consider myself not a soundbite kind of person. And uh, so I'm, I'm just gonna uh, plant a little seed here. I've been uh, working uh, since the 1990s on the transformation of the legal profession. And um, as you talked about what 2045 does, it, it's really about being more humane and more relational and, um, and, um, and, and less uh, rule bound and less structured um, so that we're creating a, a, a legal profession that actually um, is uh, more relational. So I'll start there. And, and what kind of projects does that mean? So just give us a, a bit of a flavor of the projects that you're involved in so people sort of understand that. Um, so you mentioned conscious contracts. So conscious contracts um, is a model uh, for um, entering into a relational contract. So for example, if you and I are doing a contract together, um, we don't start with, well, how much are you gonna get paid? and and all of that, it's, well, who are you? Why do you wanna do this? And what's important to you and how you work together? What are, you, what are your visions for the world that you're actually um, uh, fulfilling or moving forward by doing this particular project together? So we have that and we put that in the contract. Now for the lawyers who are listening to that, the whole idea of uh, that you would do that um, is kind of shocking because Usually that's the stuff people fight about when they go to court is what did we really mean? Well, we're actually gonna put it in the contract and there's, so that takes away that that uh, question. It's a whole a whole thing about parole evidence and all that legally. But it but beyond that, which may be you know like a vision, mission, value statement that companies are used to doing, but beyond that kind of thing, we then ask how are we gonna keep that in place? How are we going to keep this relationship in place? How do we usually respond to conflict? Like, not like just humanity in general, but me personally. How do I usually respond to conflict? And how are we going to put in a structure that is um, actually reflects it, uh, reflective of that? Um, so that when, uh, when I withdraw, somebody knows what to do to get me back engaged. And, um, and so, um, uh, we, we call the first part the touchstone and the second part uh, we call the ACED, which is short for addressing change and engaging disagreement. And, um, and those go together because the ACED depends on the relationship and the touchstone um, values that were created. And then, um, and then at, um, you know, after that is done, 
after that foundation, then there's an action plan. And the action plan is like the sort of things you're used to seeing in contracts, but from a very different place. It's not a competitive thing, but a how are we going to do this together kind of thing. And so that's one piece. I'll also say that um, we do similar work called collaborative uh, practice in divorces and we do restorative justice and we have um, courts that are focused on healing. Um, the whole thing is called the integrative law movement and um, no matter what your legal issue because we put you know like if you have a car accident um, it has um, a personal injury pers um, perspective and it has a um, did you have a criminal act perspective there are all of these different things that happen that we've created artificial boxes for in the law. And, um, and so uh, we, we're looking at a different lens with how, how are we actually going to resolve the problems that people have or, um, and, and, uh, and, uh, and taking away a lot of the artificiality. So there's, no matter what kind of legal issue you're presented with, we have a model that can actually make it more relational. Wow, that thank you. <laughs> no, that that's beautiful, and it and it and obviously it fits in the moving towards people and community above and beyond the the, the structures and and the processes that we have. So, I mean, that's that's obviously quite practical in what you're doing, and obviously it's it's you're breaking ground in doing this work. Uh, it, it's certainly not common throughout the legal uh, community, for sure. Yes. So, so when you see this and you take a deeper or sorry a wider view of what you do so that you're not in the trenches trying to figure out how to do conscious contracts and how to do all the other things you've just described how do you build a sort of a meta vision of the work that you're doing within this the legal space but then also society at large what does society at large look like um, in your vision, your personal vision, as well as that of your colleagues in your communities that you're working in. Would this be a good time to actually share my vision? Yes. <laughs> because I, I think I think I could say a whole lot more, but I'd be pointing to this. So th this is this is actually the visions that I that I use as a container for what I work on. Um, the seeds of the late 1990s and early 2000s have flourished. We are grateful to our trailblazers and pioneers who held this vision and brought it to fruition. Lawyers are now recognized for our true purposes, peacemaking, problem solving, and healing the wounds of the community. We are agents of transformation with our clients, helping each other to use conflict as an opportunity for transformation and to gain uh, and to access greater synergy and creativity. We create sustainable agreements and resolutions. Trials are rare and civil. Collaboration, prevention, and compassionate listening are the lawyer's stock and trade. Lawmakers serve, conscious of all stakeholders and of our interconnectedness with nature and each other. They are inclusive as they work on common goals and share values to benefit everyone. Law enforcement focuses on right relationships working in partnership with the community to foster strong, empowered, and safe communities. Judges are wise leaders who help to balance competing values, hold everyone accountable, and deliver fair results with love, compassion, and empathy. Prisons are a part of our past. Now we focus on rehabilitation, healing, and reconnection for all members of society. Criminal behavior is seen as a symptom of brokenness that needs to be healed, and we know that sometimes the brokenness belongs to us all. Law students still learn the focused analytical thinking that is known as thinking like a lawyer. Now they're also trained in holistic thinking and wellness. Art is part of the balanced curriculum. Our history of restorative practice, practices and nonviolent communication in schools has helped to produce citizens who tell their truths, take responsibility, and accept accountability. The legal system works for everyone. There are no more lawyer jokes. They're just not funny anymore. <laughs> Love it. Um, so, so, so inside of that, that, that's my vision of what law in 2045 will be. And inside of that, I have projects that, uh, that are meant to move us from where we are, you know, recognizing the gap 
to where we want to be. And so I, I understand that, and that's sort of going deeper into understanding what you've just said. And, and what I'd like to do is, is actually elevate that a little bit higher rather than going deeper. Okay. Um, so what, what, how do you think that relates to your vision of society at that time? Not just law, but the whole of society with that part of law being in it. So what do you think else, by law changing in the way that you've described, how else does society change? What are the impacts that that will have and how uh, will other sectors of society be different? I, I think we are, um, uh, this allows for more relational um, kinds of uh, activities, more community oriented. Um, it requires us to step up as, as people but it also um, allow it, it creates sort of obligations or, or highlights obligations that the law has um, imp has imposed that are not felt. If you're part of a community um, and, and you know that um, that you're responsible um, for that community, you're going to you're going to not be such a lone ranger. Um, it's a, it's a different level of consciousness and um, an interconnectedness. And in, in a little bit, so looking at the, the, the current movements that are out there that people in our space recognize, people that are doing the work of, of envisioning a, a different future, um, how do you think that relates to those different movements, say the future of work movement or, uh, you know, a, a new type of economy, a new type of corporations and so on? What, um, how do you think those things relate? Well, they're, they're, um, they're sort of hand in glove to, to what I'm doing because um, if people take more responsibility, then they're going to want more responsibility at work. And and and, and there, it's less about hierarchy and more about everybody working together. And so a lot of what's going on with self-management and uh, self-ownership and changing the way companies are um, structured, um, uh, the, that can't happen without law changing. And law can't change without there being sort of a pull from, from the people and you know, and, and and like right now, the law is in the way of some of that happening, right. and so so I see you know like that for example, um, like the caring economy. Uh, Rian Eisler um, is one; it's like she contributes to my books and all that kind of stuff. And she's she's a lawyer who is now looking at the care, you know, like like uh, the difference that it makes to have a caring community. Right. Um, and um, and so you said um, work. Um, the economic system, you know, like all of this is like, it's like the, uh, the pinball, uh, you know, it's like, or, or whatever, you know, th this hits this and this requires that change. Right. Yeah, because I would see, as you've described that if we are trying to change organizations, and, and sorry, if we're trying to change how people work in organizations, um, and how organizations behave, uh, where we talk about conscious companies, um, conscious contracts, um, uh, all of those tiers are interconnected in a very tight bundle because some things that change in one have to reflect in another domain that we today we have separate, right? And so which of them do you think uh, legal is most tightly bound to. What what other movements are out there that you think that uh, legal really is um, directly connected with that that they're independent or interdependent on one another? I I can't separate. I think they're all all of them. I, if, if 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 I if I look at like you know like like work, um, like the way uh, work is done now. Um, is put in place by a lot of law and a lot of um, uh, you know like 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 
for example, the people who are creating co-ops are bumping up against all of the laws that have been made to protect them from um, from the bad boss. Right. Um, or um, and, and so that has to that has to shift so they can actually be responsible for themselves and, and, and create something for themselves. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the economy is is kept in place by um, by different regulations and things like that. And, you know, so it's like, um, I, yeah, I, I don't think I can say, oh, this, but not this. I, there, it, it's possible that there's a cluster of, um, of things that are that are um, tighter, but then um, it, you know, the next level out is um, is also going to be right. impacted. It's exponential impact. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're directly and indirectly touching everything with the law. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, the, so. it, 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 the law is the structure where we define relationships, responsibilities, and um, you know expectations of you know what is a good citizen. Right, and so and that's an external measure, not an internal. It's not about in, your intrinsic values. Right, it's about what are we going to do, um, like to keep people in line. Because we assume they don't want to be um, right. uh, responsible, and and so I think like as you as you allow people to be more responsible and they tell the truth and you actually create that kind of a culture, um, then all of the little things you know the little dominoes start falling. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful, and and it, it's part of what we at Society Twenty Forty Five have always sort of thought is that all of these things are so interconnected that. At some point, we're going to stop seeing them as different things. But at the moment, society sees them as these distinct components in our in our society and in our lives. Um, you know, living, living, being different than working, being different than being a citizen, being different than you know all these other kinds of things. And um, when in reality, it's all the same. So how do we how do we start to move down that path? And I think you're describing a vision that takes us there. So what would you say um, might be a, a vision of a citizen in 24 years, in 2045? What is that? How is the, the average individual um, in the United States or somewhere else in the world, what does that individual's life uh, look like? How is it different than what they um, are experiencing today? I think accountability is a big piece that intersects with my work, because if you are expecting um, somebody to tell you what to do from X outside, um, then you're not you're not looking for what you can do, or you're not you, you're not um, you're not taking that responsibility for yourself, and so the average citizen um, is pretty passive now, um, and you know the media tells tells us what to um, care about and the uh, we haven't even talked about media as one of our areas <laughs> but you know um, the, the media tells us what to care about um, we go to school and learn how to be um, you know obedient and subservient and all of that kind of stuff and you know and, and so we, we haven't sort of had that internal shift towards accountability and that and that uh, as we make that more I mean, clearer, I think. I don't know. You know, it's, it's like as things change and people can step up, I think that that's going to change a lot. And so then they'll be accountable for all sorts of things in their life. They're, you know, like uh, what's going on in their community. Instead of calling the police when their neighbor is too loud, they'll go knock on the door and say, hey, you know, I mean, like, you know, it's not, it's, this is my neighbor. This is my community. This is not, you know, an enemy. Right. And um, and so I think, I, you know, I, there are lots and lots of ways, I'm sure, but that's the one that comes to mind for me that's going to, like, you know, make a make a big difference that has uh, ramifications. Yeah, it's it's the old thing of, of walking down the street and seeing problems and saying, well, that's a problem with the health department and that's a problem with the legal department and that's a problem with human services department and i just keep walking down the street and, and just keep pointing fingers um yeah and that's yeah. so much of today's reality right 
Yeah, I always, um, for me, I, I, I somewhere probably in my late teens, um, when I, I, I once had an, something come up and I said, oh, somebody ought to do something about that. And then I realized I was somebody. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was like, why, why not me? Yeah. So for me, it's been, you know, you know, like throughout my life, the, you know, there were kids, teenagers living on the streets of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and I just, you know, had them come live with me. I mean, that, t that took, took care of the problem of teen homelessness for a bunch of kids, you know, <laughs> and, and, I, and I also joined a task force that was looking at the problem, but I, I joined the task force from a much different perspective. Like I knew, I knew these kids, um, you know, I, I I, I was um, I was more of a spokesperson for them uh, because they weren't invited to the task force um, than I was, uh, you know, some parental figure who was concerned that they were out late at night. So it sounds like you're you were you've been living the vision for a, longer than just simply envisioning a future that looks it. Oh, um, it, yeah, it, this definitely emerged. <laughs> so. So we understand a little bit better what you see as the future uh, at that time, and we understand how that changes in, in people's lives. Now, if we go back into the more granular side of, of the work that you've been doing, how do we get there from here? How, how do we, how, do, how does, in your world, the, the legal profession and the legal space, how do we move from, um, where we are today and what kind of things need to emerge over the next 24 years for that future to, to emerge. I, I, I've been guided by the work of Burkana and um, what they call the two loops model, um, where uh, which um, Deb Wheatley, Deborah Fries and others created a number of years ago. Um, and uh, and uh, in that system, uh, they talk about how systems evolve and die and that um, as systems die one of the things that happens is that pioneers kind of fall out i always see it like rain you know like people who who are um, you know who, who know the system's not working they start falling out before before the system completely collapse collapses and um and so uh so what i'm um uh, uh, what i've been doing and, and what i hope is that the answer is that I'm finding the people who are leaving that system. Like they've already seen that something else needs to happen. Some of them have actually invented answers. Some of them have, um, you know, and, and I think that's why I'm interested in the work of 2045. It's like, who are the people out there who've already fallen out of that system and are, and are creating the new systems? Because as those people get connected, then, uh, then the new system starts emerging. And so that's what I've been doing in the legal profession. I've, I've had some success at that in terms of um, uh, people um, aren't weird if they are part of something, you know, like like you know, the pioneers usually are seen as pe being pretty weird and, <laughs> um, and, you know, radical even, you know, like these, these people are crazy. And then, you know, later on, it, you know, like I, like I was really shunned in the beginning of my work with the legal profession I was crazy. And now, you know, I have American Bar Association best-selling books, you know, and it's, it's like, like, you know, like you go from being the weird nutcase to well, maybe she's got something there. Well, so that's let's, been let's, my, just my path. Be, let's just be clear. You're still the weird nutcase. It's I'm just that a you're a successful weird nutcase, right? <laughs> that's... But I'm finding people who are, are like, yeah, this isn't working. And so we had to do something different. And so I'm not convincing anybody of anything, but I'm showing that better path that, you know, that, you know, like you don't, you don't fight the system. You just build a better system that people, uh, Bug Monster Fuller quote. Right. Um, and so, so that's been my starting point. I don't know if that's the right starting point, but it's the one that made sense to me. And so, um, so I've built, you know, I've, I've built quite a, um, a community of lawyers who are now putting their effort to this same mission. And, um, you know, and I've been training 
people to teach at other uh, at law schools. I teach at a law school. I've taught at several. I've been training them to teach these ideas um, so that we're you know planting them in the future. Um, and so so when I teach, for example, at a law school, I'm teaching self management. Like you know, like this is this, you know, there's this whole movement out there that we are the lawyers for. We need, you know, we need to have the things that they want. And so I, th I think that, uh, that with 2045, you know, we're looking for who are our people and how can we work together? And we know they're out there and we bump into them every once in a while, but let's, let's create a structure that allows us to find each other easier. Yeah. Let's make an effort to find each other, not simply bump into each other. Out right. There. And that's what this series is about finding those folks and having conversations with those folks and understanding where we're going together. Um, yeah. and, and not to think that we're on our own and not to believe that we're making change that is only in our own little area and our own little sector, but to recognize that it is all interconnected and that, uh, and that we need to share each other's visions in order to be able to make this happen. Well, and we might find people who are complete failures, but who have provided an idea that is um you know a seed and we might we might find people that look like us you know like they're they're saying the right words but they're not they're not really working on the same vision um uh, but um uh, but that's part of the inquiry process absolutely so when you think about the work you've done so far and the work that still needs to be done and it will never be done never be done um what do you think is sort of the the most likely to come to fruition and what do you think that is is less likely to come to fruition what, what what's your concerns like the things you envision the most and you think wow i'm not sure this is ever going to happen i'm not sure i'm thinking there anymore because some of the things that i thought were impossible happened and, um, and COVID really, you know, shook up the legal system a lot. Um, so I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent fan of online dispute resolution. Although, um, about 10 years ago, I designed what I thought would be, um, like a, an online court for, um, that was really more of a counseling program for people who were in conflict, um, across borders. And, uh, I never did anything with it because it just, it was, that wasn't going to happen. You know, like lawyers were never going to uh, go online, uh, uh, you know, for anything because uh, <laughs> they were such technophobes at that point. Uh, but, um, you know, it just that that wasn't going to happen. And I did something else. And other people kept on looking at the ODR movement and, and saying, okay, well, you know, we're, we're going to eventually we're going to be online and people are going to do court online. And it was about a 20 year in the future thing. And then, uh, you know, by, by March, by March 28th or something like that <laughs> of 2020, um, everything had moved from, we're never going to be online to we're online now. Um, and so uh, uh, the things that I thought were not possible sometimes happen really quickly. You know, there, uh, some idea goes out there viral you know, uh, some celebrity starts talking about her conscious uncoupling, uncoupling, and that's a really one of the models of, 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 of a conscious approach to divorce and collaboration. And so, so there, like, I just, I don't, um, I don't know what the future is going to bring that is going to sort of ignite any of these ideas. So I, I, I don't, I don't look at them and say this one will never happen. Uh, I, I, I see the gap. Right. So well, that's great because I, I think internal optimists, like people <laughs> who start crazy ideas, um, I think we generally don't see the problems as insurmountable or else we would never, never do them. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's not so much that they're insurmountable. It's that there are some that we think, wow, I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't uh, know how this is going to happen. Yeah. Yes. That, that's, you know, like, like how is not, you know, yeah. it's not in my control um, right. beyond just laying some groundwork, planting the seeds, but yeah, it happens. Yeah. So 
looking at all of that, and, and we've talked a lot about the legal space and the work that you've done and all that, what, um, which of the other movements do you think are, are movements that you would want, um, you'd want to be closer to, or you'd want them to be closer to the work that you're doing, um, that you think that, you know, maybe the work you've been doing is ripe for that type of contribution or, or ripe for that cross-pollination. So if you had your druthers, where would you go next as far as sort of the relationship between the work you've been doing and, and the work of others? I think education. Um, because um, a lot, so there are a lot of projects going on in uh, education about um, helping children um, learn to resolve um, their differences and, and, and create community. And you know, some of my colleagues are working there. I also uh, have seen, um, in, you know, in teaching and legal education, you know, like people come into my class, they bless their hearts, you know, they're, they're in, in a lot of small boxes and, um, and, when, and they leave my class as different humans. And, uh, and so, um, so the more we educate people into, you know, like, uh, they, I guess some people would call that we would be um, influencing them um, in a system that uh, uh, that doesn't exist or something like that, but like that um, influencing uh, the young people to to start being accountable, to start uh, being willing to speak up um, uh, and um, and creating communities inside of schools at all levels, and then uh, and then teaching them um, the ways that that paradigm exists outside. So um, so. I think you know working with education, um, and uh, you know, I'm I'm always interested in some of the experiments that are going on in elementary school education. You know, with small kids, um, I have a I have grandchildren who um, you know are learning to sit in desks and uh, you know uh, learning to be uh, good citizens in a way that um, like I want them to have an alternative. To that, um, you know, the kids I took in off of the streets were, were the kinds of kids that um, that didn't fit in those boxes. Exactly. And I and and I loved them for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you love me because I've never fit in a box very comfortably. <laughs> I do love you. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a good way to get some compliments, isn't it? I love it. <laughs> Um, so from from the standpoint of seeing this vision realized and seeing the progression that we um, I think we all see in some way differently and yet similarly because I think we all hold a piece of the vision moving forward and um, and that's, I think, what 2045 is about, is we believe that everyone holds a little bit of the vision and that we all, we individually don't hold it completely and we cannot. Um, so that all said, um, sort of wrapping up the, the, our conversation, what do you see as the, I hate to use this word, but what, what's the risk factor of these things not developing as we see them, as you see them developing. If, if things don't go in the direction that we would like them to go, what happens? Uh, well, as the optimist, I, it's a path I don't want to go down, but it's one that I've actually spent some time inquiring into as well. And I, I, think, I, I think that our survival as a species is in question. Um, that that sense of interconnectedness um, is um, is what we are we're missing in, in a lot of the big things. Um, you know, again, the pandemic showed us how interconnected the world is, uh, but then people are pushing back against that and um, and and denying that. And so, you know, like the, with climate change, you know, um, the planet will survive. But I'm not sure our species will. 
uh, I think that um, uh, as people, um, so, so, so that's one level. Then let's say we do survive, but the domineering, the domination culture becomes the culture rather than uh, this um, culture of, um, of interdependence. If that happens, then I, uh, then, uh, I see the quality of life really going down. Um, and, um, and having, you know, having us be living in little islands of our, you know, of, 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 you know, these are, you know, this is, this is me and my self-interest and, uh, and my self-interest is all that matters. And, um, and the self-interest of the other people who, um, I'm not even sure they agree, but somehow they feel like they are part of the same, um, mindset or something. Um, you know, if, if, if there are lots of people out there who are working on a future that I wouldn't want to live in. And, uh, and so for me, this, this work is about like having the alternative be available and, um, and, and to be feeding that and, and um, helping to heal the things that keep us from, um, from having more of that freedom. That dysfunction. And, yeah. Yeah. So um, I think our time is kind of nearing. Do you want to, um, is there something you, you, that's burning in you that you want to say that you think, okay, Jose didn't ask this question, but I, I need to answer it? I don't think so. I, I don't know. I'll think of it later. You know, of course. Five of minutes course. After we hang up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's been a good conversation. Thank you. No, thank you. I, I've, um, I must admit this was a little easier than I expected. It's, uh, it's, it feels so natural to be thinking and talking about these things. And um, I was kind of wondering how this would go from the standpoint of, of just um, verbalizing some of the things that we haven't verbalized and, uh, and exploring in them a little bit more deeply. So thank you for being our first guinea pig and, and doing this Friday talks. And, um, and now I'm gonna open it up because Kimberly cannot resist but ask a question. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to let Kimberly jump in and I'll shut up for a little bit. I just want to say that we were so lucky, a, a community of people I've been working with for over a decade, we're so lucky to have access to some of Kim's students to create a conscious contract for us. And these are people we've had a great relationship. We've worked together for many years. We thought we knew and loved each other and had a shared purpose and goals, but we learned so much by going through that experience. And we got a juicy document that captured our essence, our purpose, our mission, our vision, what we care about and who we are and how, we'll, how we will recover from the inevitable conflicts that people have when they're working on a worthy cause. So thank you, Kim. It was stunning. Thank you so much. That wasn't a question. <laughs> but I, I think you're it, not allowed so... to you're not allowed to promote her. This is not right. <laughs> I, 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 I think she's promoting her group as you know, they, they were smart enough to to do this kind of inquiry that actually ch changes something at their core. Like that, like there's a way that when you have that kind of conversation, you can relax. You're no longer trying to figure out how to be or when that person says that and you're offended, you actually know what to do. And you don't, you don't, you know, cogitate about it and ruminate and all that kind of stuff. And so, uh, so, well, you know, that, that energy that she has, um, it, you know, is, is what I'm trying to release in the world. Well, it looks like you've, you've uh, taken up a prominent space, or at least the, the agreement has taken up a prominent space in her home. <laughs> it's hanging right by where I work all day long. It's, it's beautiful. And it was so customized to really capture our personalities. It was just a beautiful experience. Matt, did you have any comments before we wrap it up? The, of, all the, of all the comments, all the stuff that Kim said, um, the one that kept bouncing around in my head is when you asked the question of what will the future of society look like? And she, she had this beautiful statement um, about what, it, you know, no more lawyer jokes are not going to be funny in the future. And um, 
and it really encapsulates what she what she does and i've taken her her um her course but the for, from the perspective of this effort uh of trying to bring people together and make a bigger network and stuff like that um it was really clear that how this relates to other movements was not clear. I mean, later on, it was uh, some things came out and you know they relate. Education came up. I just saw education is going to come up a lot. Um, but um, but I think that's where our effort should be a focus is in the okay. Here's your vision. How do, how do we end up with this whole? We, in other words, we define what's separating us by talking about everybody's vision and seeing how they shape that holes in the middle and uh and then go to work on that but um it was well well exposed well i mean i'm a big fan so sorry if i'm if i'm shilling for kim but um <laughs> and i i've taken i've taken her class and at first my reaction was oh shit there's only one on one there's only relational <laughs> You know, who who never you know, and I was thinking of of contracts, uh, conscious contracts. I was focusing on the contract side, and um, it was about the second or third session where the light came on and went, oh, this is not okay. I got it. It's relationships, relationships and stuff like that. So even though she said it and and I read about it and all that stuff, it wasn't until we got into the exercises that that. It, it became clear how important it was and uh, and I was able to pull out examples from my own life that said oh yeah the best relationship I've had with clients are those that where the clients are where we know ahead of time <clears throat> what makes me laugh what, make, laugh what makes them laugh what what pisses me off what does it look like and and things like that and um, and then how do you how do you how do you resolve those, those issues? And uh, it's not always, you know, what I assume is not the same as what somebody else assumes. Um, so it could, it's good to get it out there, put it out there. Thank you. Well, let's wrap it up here because um, we all have a, a deadline um, approaching of the hour, at the top of the hour where I'm sure we all have meetings and such. So um, we'll leave it at that. Thank you for listening to the 2045 Friday talk. And hopefully you'll join us one of these other Fridays and follow us uh, online and uh, join us live as we continue these uh, Friday talks as we start to publicize them. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and you'll come back. Have a great day. Thank you for having me. Oh, sorry. Thank it's you. Okay. <laughs>